Welcome back to the table, everybody. Today, David and I are here to tell you about a new game by Fablesmith called Passengers. Yes, Passengers is a social deduction game. Yes. Hidden roles, for sure. Um, but the idea of the game is you've got these boats that are going to the afterworld, or the afterlife, I think, as they call it. Yep. And you're sending souls and or demons to the afterlife. But only one of these boats each round is going to go. There's a bit of voting. And each player at the table is going to be allied with either... A demon. Or a soul. A soul guide. Uh, and that's in the odd player count games. If you're playing with an even player count, there is actually another role that's kind of in the middle of all that. They want just as many souls as demons to go out. They're like but a chaos monster. They are a chaos monster. What are they called again? <laughs> the yaster. The yaster. I'm not sure if that's a real word, but that's what they're called. <laughs> uh, so... Here's the game set up, and there's a few things that you should uh, take a look at here. These are the boats, of course, and then you've got the gifts. Those are the kind of the two main parts of what's in the center of the table. The boats are going to end up filled with passengers, which each player is going to have in their hand. At the beginning of the game, everyone's going to be dealt cards out of a deck that's built out of an X number of souls and X number of demons. So depending on player count, there's right. going to be something like we have seven set up here, I think. So I think there's four souls and three demons. So typically more souls than demons, but yes. just barely. And then you'll get dealt a soul and a demon. So your starting hand will either be two souls and a demon, or two demons and a soul, or if you're that yes there, you could be a yes there and a demon, demon and, and a soul. soul. Right. And those are the three cards you have to play throughout the whole game. Yeah, and if you're playing with more than four players, and there's this plays actually from four to eight. Yep. If you're playing with more than four players, there's going to be more than one demon at the table, and at that point. Before anything else happens, everyone's going to close their eyes, and then the demons will open their eyes, acknowledge each other because they're going to be working together, as are the soul players. Yes. But the demons have a bit of a leg up because they know who Who's each who? other are. They're going to want to try to protect their identities, as you would in any game like this. But this isn't just a game about kind of like talking and lying to each other. Correct. There's a lot of mechanical things going on. There's some voting going on, decisions. So you have to really pay attention to what players are doing mm -hmm. to de try to determine mm, are, who are you with? Can I trust you? Yeah, and I think what makes it different too is that it's not just about which boat goes in, but the boats that go in are going to score at the end, yeah. right? And so the souls are going to score from having the same colored souls in a boat. But the demons score, interestingly, they score if you have the same color demon next to a soul. Yeah, it's really interesting because each demon is one point, each soul is one point at the end of the game, but there are some interesting bonus things we'll get to at the end. But throughout the course of the game, you're gonna play three rounds, and each round, like I said, is gonna have two boats, a wolf boat and a raven boat. You, on your turn, are going to simply take one of your passengers in your hand, and again, you're going to either have a couple demons and a soul yep. or vice versa, and you're going to play them face down in any one of these locations. Say, I placed right here. Now, once I place there, a couple things gonna happen. One, I'm going to collect these voices. These little blue symbols correlate to voices, which are effectively the power of your vote yep. during the end of the round. You're gonna take those voices and then, below the boat in your space, you're going to take the gift that's depicted. So I could take the master coin in this case and put it in front of me. Now these gifts, everyone's gonna have one at the end of the round. Yep. And before voting, you're going to run through these gifts from low to high. So I know I'm gonna have the master coin power, Sure. but it's going to be the last thing that happens during that part of the game. Right, so if I go on my turn then and I place a soul here, I'll take the scroll, which is a six. So I know that even though I went after David in turn order, mine will trigger first because I'm lowered. Yeah, so you're going to go all the way around the table until everyone's put a passenger in one of the boats. Then you're going to, like I said, go through all of those gifts. Now, we'll take a moment to go through some of the gifts and sure. tell you what they do. Uh, for instance, the canteen here, which is generally going to be, I think, in most of the boats, depicted with the most voices. Which makes sense. And that's because it doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. So if you have the canteen, there's good news. You have three voices, maybe, or, or a few more or less, uh, but you don't really get any power. The chromatis is really interesting. So this is where the gifts start to kind of portray learning some things about what people did at the table. This one says, name a color, red, blue, or green. Those are three colors. All the souls and demons are those three colors. All other players must confess how many passengers of that color they have in their hand. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, why does it matter what color sure. is in their hand? 
And we're going to go ahead and jump ahead and tell you a little bit how things score. The boats are going to go at the end of each round over there to the afterlife. The other boats, they're out of the game. So the three boats that are over there, they have a bunch of typically face down passengers. Yes. There may be some gifts that turn them face up. Then you're going to turn them all face up. And like we said, each demon will score a point for the demon team. Yep. Each soul, one point for the soul team. But the souls are going to get bonus points if an individual boat has more than one of the same color soul Correct. in it. So say if there's a boat that has three red souls in it, it's going to get three points for the souls and then some bonus points for having yep. X number of the same color. Yep. And you're going to do that for each boat. Now, a little more complicated is, is the, the way the demons score. <laughs> The demon score for adjacency. Yes, so they want to have a demon next to the same colored soul. But the adjacency is really interesting because it can be not just left or right on its same boat, but also up or down in the boats that came before it or the boat that came after it. And if there's a spot that wasn't used, it'll skip over that and go to the next soul. So there's a lot of like spatial awareness and you still want to get the same color. But a lot that can happen if you thought it was a soul and you're like, oh, we're going to get a lot of soul points, but actually it was a demon. Right. It's next to souls, so the demons get a lot of points. And it's really interesting because, like she just said, you could have a demon right here, and if on the boats at the end of the game there are two souls here and two souls here of the same color, that would be one point for the demon, then another four points yes. just for that demon. And then if you have some other demons, they might score some points too. And then you're just going to add up the points. And if the demons have more points, the demons win the game. If the souls have more points, the souls win the game. Yep. And in those even player count games, the Yaster is going to win because they just get straight up X number of points. Right. So they don't really have to worry about tallying points. I think in certain player counts, it's six and a half points. Yeah. And then in higher player counts, it's a little bit more than that. So they just have that sort of barometer of points They're to... basically like, if you can keep it dead even, right? Yes. If you can keep the bonus points to a minimum and just keep it dead even, I will win the game. And the Yaster itself is not worth any points. So they're a good like blocking token, basically, that you can put in there and be like, you don't get the same color, you don't get any demon points, we're just gonna keep it low value so that way my default points win in the end. Yeah, and that's how the scoring works. We will rewind now and talk a little bit more <laughs> about the game. But I would say, if you're teaching this game, I would always start with kind of showing a scoring example yeah. because it'll really help people understand why they want to send what they want to send <laughs> right. on the boats to the afterlife. But like some of the other ones, like the scroll that I took allows you to switch the position of any two passengers in play. So that could be really big. If I know that this is a soul that I need, I can switch it with a different soul. Or if I know it's a demon, I might right. say, okay, I don't want you anywhere near the middle. I want you over to the side, or at the very least, I want you on the other boat and I'm not gonna vote for that boat. So that's yeah. really giving a lot of power. And then as you may have imagined, there are some cards that let you peek at some of the cards. Cards. There's some cards that let you reveal, if you want to, some yep. of the cards. The seer paw here says, peek at a passenger in play without a mask. A mask, you ask? Well, <laughs> that's another one of the gifts. And this is probably one of my favorite ones. Yeah. The mask says, place a mask on a passenger in play. The color of that passenger is now that of the mask. Yep. So for instance, you're going to want to go, okay, well, I know some because someone revealed this one or I peeked at it, or someone peeked at it. I know it's blue, but I need it to be red for my scoring. Yes. You could use the mask, take one of these masks, the red in this case, and place it on that, knowing that it's blue underneath. When it's revealed at the end of the game, it's no longer blue, it is red. And the interesting thing about the masks too is you'll only use one of these, each of these masks once. Exactly. Potentially. Because after all of the passenger filled, we're going to do a vote. So once all the other all the players at the table have put passengers in the boats, everyone is going to take their coin, and I have the master coin, Ooh. but everyone else has a normal coin, and you put in your hand, everyone puts their fists in, reveals their vote, and the winning vote sends the boat to the afterlife. But remember, it's not just how many people voted for this. It's yes. using those voices. So the spot you took on the board can really make a difference. If you were one person who took just one voice because the gift was really good, well, now your vote doesn't mean as much as opposed to the person who took the one where it's three. Your vote is really important and it could be the one that actually makes the difference in which boat is going to the afterlife. Yeah, and even if it's tied after that, it's going to come down to this master coin because yep. whoever has this master coin is going to break the tie in whichever direction it needs to go. And that's why having the master coin can be important. Not only do you go first, but it breaks ties. And the master coin card says, give the master coin to any other player than you. So for instance, 
if Emily had had that, she's gonna take that master coin away from me. Mm -hmm. And at least with this gift set, she's gonna take this and give it to some other player. So I, mean, I have to figure out who to trust at the right, table. You could give it back to me, in fact. But I don't if, like the way you've been voting, David, so. <laughs> exactly. These are the mind games that start happening at the table. Um, and to make it a little bit more interesting, like I said, this is just one gift set. There's one for four players, yep. and then there's two and three more gift sets. So if you want to change things up, I don't know if they're a little bit more advanced or sure. not, but they definitely change the game up because you have to get used to the fact that like, oh, the canteen no longer does nothing, it, it does something. Yeah. So you're gonna look at all of those at the beginning of the game and determine, okay, what can I do and what am I gonna to wanna to do to right. try to figure out what's going on before we send these boats. You do that three times. So at the end of the game, three rounds, two boats each, one boat from those two goes over into sort of the scary scoring area or the afterlife. And then you just flip the cards and, and score reveal. It up and reveal it up. It's a very fast playing game. Yes. There's not, uh, in our experience, there wasn't a lot of verbal social deduction sure. going on. There's not like, I'm a this. Right. And, and unlike other games too, where I think a lot of social deduction games we've played, everyone says, oh, I'm one of the good guys. Yeah. There's really no, I'm one of the good guys in this situation. Yeah, because there's more of the souls, so they could be the good guys. But at the same time, you're really trying to figure out, like, what's the best move for placement, right? So even yeah. if I give information, even if I think I'm giving it to the good guys, it could be more helpful just to hold it back yeah. and not tell people. So it's very different, the level of scoring that comes in and the ability to do things to manipulate the board afterwards. Yeah, and it's important to know, too, this is one of those games, too, that I think is somewhat protective of the fact that even if someone figures out who you are, oh sure. Even if after round in the middle of round two, everyone knows, well, Emily and David are the demons for sure, hundred yeah. percent. You can still play this game, and you it's, can still win. Yeah, you can still win because, in fact, at that case, it might even be just more relaxing to go. Okay, well, now we can communicate to yeah, each other. Exactly. So you do this power, I'll take this gift. Now, of course, everyone else is at the table too, <laughs> so you need to be careful about that. But that's kind of the interesting thing that's going on here with passengers. If you have any questions at all about the game, please make them in the comments below, and we'll get down there and answer whatever we can. Until next time, of course, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then.